Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. You know I'm just way too legit to knit. I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's my excuse because I can't operate two sticks at one time. <laughs> Without further ado let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdus with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Karen Lacey Stripes Crochet Scarf. This is an easy level scarf. There's a nice easy repeat on this and you are going to be using today Karen Big Donut Yarn. This is what it looks like and you can see the colors are already decided for you. So it's a continuous strand. It's just dyed this way and you can pull it apart in order to change the colors if you wish. In today's tutorial what I'm going to do is that I'm going to teach you what the repeat is but I'm also going to teach you how to manipulate the colors. So if for example maybe um, you don't want the colors to naturally come out on their own at the way they are. I'm going to show you how to end some yarn and then add new yarn. So for example say this green here um, you did not want it to partially finish during a row then you can just end it on the one side and start with a fresh new color. So I'll be showing you that today as well. So there is a crochet diagram that's available to you on page number two. If you would like to change the size of this particular scarf and make it maybe even a blanket for all you want it um, you can do multiples of six plus two. So you go six, 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 six and then add two at the end and you will have the balance in order to create this. So without further ado um, this at the time of filming this uh, PDF will be updated and I will be showing you how to finish this um, the way that it should be. Let's begin. For demonstration reasons I've already have my Ogos open and I'm just going to be using this blue color here and this is what it would look like if you were to buy it. And we're going to begin this next. Use a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play. So let's begin our journey. We're going to start with a slip knot to begin and you can either chain 32 as it's stating for the scarf or you can do multiples of six and then add two at the very end. So I'm just gonna do a little mini swatch with you because that's all that's needed today. So I'm gonna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Is it wide enough? Yes or no? If you're not happy with it add another six. So one, two, three, four, five, six and so forth. So one, two, three, four, five and six and I'll do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. So once you're happy with the width of it and you're doing it in this method then you just have to add two more and then you'll have the balance. So you can do it that way or just chain 32 and not worry about it. Let's begin row number one. In row number one you're gonna go second chain from the hook and turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It'll look nicer. So just get the back hump and I just need you to single crochet yourself all the way across your chain. You don't really need to worry about counting it if you were counting the first time and you're confident and I will see you at the end of this row. This is row number one. So at the end of the row you're just filling it all in and you're going to turn your work and now let's begin row number two. Row number two we're going to start creating those V stitches and that's what's gonna be helping us to keep in line for the future. So we're gonna chain three and that will count as your first double crochet. So the very next stitch right here is going to be your next double crochet. So the edges will always be the same. There will be when you start it there will always be a chain three and then a double crochet in the next and on the other side the last two will always be a double crochet each. So let's begin the first part here. So I need you to skip the next stitch and you're gonna put a V stitch into the next one. So this V stitch here is going to have an extra space in it. So it's gonna be a double crochet first and then chain two and in the same stitch another double crochet. Now I want you to skip the next two and the next V stitch is gonna be different. So the next V stitch is going to be two double crochet into the same stitch and then only a chain one and then two more double crochets into the same stitch. And you're gonna keep alternating between the two types of V stitches that you have. So this one's thicker than the last one. You can see that right? So this means that after this one's done you have to go back to this format. So skipping two and put one double crochet into the next and don't forget to chain two and then double crochet in the next or in the same one sorry. Okay 
So now that that easy one or the one with the less work is here, the more complicated one is gonna be the next one up. So skipping two and you'll start with two double crochet in it. Chain only one and then into the same one two more double crochet. Okay, so skipping two and it's gonna be the simpler one. So it'll be one double crochet only, chain two, and one double crochet. So you just gotta remember the chain one only exists in the one that has more double crochets and the chain two exists when there's only two uh, double crochets used for the V stitch. So if that's the simple one, skipping two, you go to the more elaborate one. So there's two into the first one to begin, chain one only and then two more. So you're gonna keep alternating between these two all the way to the other side Skipping two, let's go more simple. So a double crochet, chain two and double crochet. We're coming close to the end. So if you're keeping with the stitch count, there should only be three stitches left. So you're gonna skip only one and then the last two are going to be double crochet. And this was row number two. And now we're gonna turn our work and begin number three. Now rows number three and four are going to be the repeat pattern until the work is approximately almost 80 inches long and then you're gonna do one row to finish it. So let's begin row number three. It's part of the repeat. Chain three, I mentioned that before. It's always gonna start the same and then a double crochet in the next double crochet here. The easiest way to remember what to do, this is simple, this is complex. So if there's a simple, the complex one goes right above it. So right inside that chain two space, you're going to put in two double crochet first, chain one and then two double crochet. Then you look at the next one. See it's complex, so you want a simple one. So it's gonna be one double crochet first, chain two and one double crochet. Do you get what I'm saying about that? So here's the simple one. So it means that this one has to be complex. I'm just coming up with terms that <laughs> out of nowhere here. But I come up with terms like this that helps me to understand how to follow this on my own if you weren't watching me. So if that's complex, the one above it has to be simple. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So you're just gonna look at what's below and put exactly the diff the opposite one above it. So this one's complex. And I need you to do this all the way across then to the final. And we'll be there in just a few seconds from now. So here in this case it's going to be a complex to finish. And once this last one is in, you just immediately go to the final two double crochets and place one double crochet in each. So one there and in the turning chain right here, go right into the chain work. Don't go to a space, go to the chain and double crochet. And that was row number three. So you see how it looks? Let's begin number four, which is part of the repeat. In row number four, chain three. We've already talked about that before and double crochet in the first. Again, look at what's below. So we go into the chain one space. This is complex, so it has to be simple. So a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Look at to the next one. It's simple, so it has to be complex. Just keep opposite to what you see. This yarn feels really good on the hands, by the way. Okay, here. It's gonna be simple. And then complex is going into the next one. So please do this all the way across. So what I wanna talk to you about is that eventually the color will change. There is ogos that are solids. But if you have one of these ones that have the striping colors, then you want to be able to manipulate that. So you can let it ride if it doesn't bother you that it changes midway through a row. But what if you didn't? So what I'm gonna do next is that I'm gonna show you how to end uh, some yarn so that you can start off with a fresh row. So if you don't think you have enough yarn to get 
across. It's a great option so that you can start with a fresh color so that you have uh, more of a, an intentional yarn change instead of letting it change on its own. So I've been working my way across as I've been yapping at you. And then I'm going to double crochet in the final two. So let's, this is the end of row number four. So you'd have to repeat now and we'll talk about the repeat and then I'll show you that color trick next. So now you have to repeat rows three and four. You can go back in the timeline of this of the video chapters to go back to number three. So you go three, four, three, four until about 80 inches. That's 79 and three quarters of, in, of inches. So what I want to do now is that I want to show you how to change the color. So maybe you don't, you want the color to change. Maybe you want to change the colors more frequently so that it's more striping. We can do that and that's what I'm gonna show you next. So let's talk about intentionally changing the color. So I'm at the end of the row. It can be any row that you want to. It doesn't really matter but I'm just gonna, this is the end of row number four. And so I'm just trimming my yarn and I'm just going to weave in the ends. The best way to do this though is so that you don't ever have these ends coming out is grab a tapestry needle and put that on any t uh, tail ends. Do the same thing. So what you wanna do is just turn it and just glide it underneath the stitch work into the same color underneath right there. And your goal is is to go once and when you pull on it don't change the shape of it and then go through a slightly different path back to where you were. Just stay inside the stitch work and then one more time across. So you wanna go back and forth a total of three times. Anytime you're getting in tail ends that's what you wanna do including that starting and ending tails. So this is where I'm demonstrating it today. So this is where I'm going to pick up when I start the next row. This is where we finished. To start the next row just grab the yarn, leave enough so that you have a yarn tail that you can throw that through a tapestry needle that I just showed you and you wanna attach it to the beginning uh, stitch here. So just going in and pull through and then chain three. So you're starting a new row with the new color. And then you can go right up over top of the straggler just for the next one. That's a double crochet. You already know what you're doing. And then just leave it off to the side and you can use a tapestry needle to hide the remaining of that in. So carrying on the pattern is if you know it you can see it's simple. So it must be complex. And so I've already demonstrated how to go across these. So you can just do that. And then you can change the color at any time on any row really as long as you just maintain the pattern sequence to have it working out for you. So this one here is complex so it must be sim uh, simple on top. So what I'm gonna do is just a couple more rows. So you have to end on a row four in order to start your edging or so your final edge or your, your border and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next in just a few moments from now. So let's talk about the final row. So this will be updated in the future with the PDF. So you're going to finish on the fourth row you technically could finish on the third row once I'm about to tell you what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so every one of the chain spaces whether it's a chain two or a chain one is always gonna be skipped. It's gonna bring us back into balance because we started off with single crochet here and what we're doing is that we're only single crocheting in the tops of each one of the single or each one of the double crochet. So chain one only and put one single crochet in each of the double crochets. So if there's a chain space like there is here just immediately jump over and go into the next double crochet. So you're only crocheting in the double crochets all the way across and this will bring you back into balance with, with how you started. And once you're all the way getting closer you're gonna just finish on the very final few double crochet that are left and don't forget that turning chain counts as a double crochet. So going into the chain work of the final. And then that's where you're gonna end your journey and you can see it brings us back into balance no matter how you do it. So this here is the Karen Lacey Stripes Crochet Scarf. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this kind of concept. It's a nice easy stitch to be able to maintain and it's a wonderful pattern on behalf of Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon right here on the Crochet Crowd. Bye bye.